Honeybees collect propolis from plants to fight pests and diseases. There are plenty of evidence showing that propolis can fight bacterial diseases, fungal diseases and virus diseases of honeybees. However, is propolis powerful enough to take down human viruses? This video series about propolis is brought to you by our supporters on Patreon. In April of 1990, Italian researchers published a scientific article describing the effect of 5-propolis flavonoids on the infectivity and replication of some herpes virus, adenovirus, coronavirus, and rotavirus. Flavonoids are an important class of natural products. They are widely found in fruits and vegetables and play a variety of biological activities in plants, most notorious as detoxification and antimicrobial agent. Honeybees along evolution were able to understand the power of these compounds and learn how to use them to protect the nest. Humans are following the same path. For example, it is very popular in European and South America countries to find propolis products because of its antibacterial properties. Using cell culture approaches, the researchers evaluated the potential antiviral properties of several flavonoids purified from raw propolis. Can propolis flavonoids inhibit virus replication? To answer this question, the researchers infected cells with different viruses, four herpes viruses, three that infected humans, and one that infected bovines. One human adenovirus, two coronaviruses, one human and one bovine, and one monkey rotavirus. After the virus infect the cells, the researchers wash the surface of the cell culture to eliminate the remaining viruses and then apply new cell media containing different flavonoid concentrations, making sure the virus particles never enter in contact with flavonoids. After the completion of the virus replication cycle, the researchers then quantified the final viral load. And interestingly, two of the flavonoids studied, chrysine and camphorol, proved to be highly active in inhibiting the replication of herpes viruses. The chrysine concentration to inhibit 50% of the herpes viruses studied was much lower than the concentration of chrysine toxic to the cells, showing that the effect was indeed a result of some virus replication inhibition inside the cells and not the results of toxicity of the compounds to the cells. Interestingly, camphorol also showed results against herpes viruses, with lower toxicity to the cells. The authors described positive results with other compounds against other viruses as well, but I'm not particularly impressed by those, because the concentration of the compounds to inhibit virus replication start to be closer to the toxic concentration to the cells, increasing the chances for false positives. I will leave a link at the description of this video so you can read the article yourself. But what about the viricidal effect? In the previous experiment, the authors were checking replication and inhibition after the virus infected the cells. But what would happen if the compounds enter in contact with the virus particles before the infection? Can the propolis compounds kill the viruses before they enter in the cells? To answer this question, the researchers incubated an equal amount of viruses with different dilutions of the flavonoids, and then quantified how many of these viruses were still able to replicate in cells. At concentration of 10 micrograms per ml, chrysine reduced the infectivity of the herpes viruses studied here by approximately 45%. And at the concentration of 60 micrograms per ml, quercetin reduced infectivity of the human herpes viruses studied here by approximately 65%. The bovine herpes virus 1, adenovirus 2, coronavirus OC43, and the bovine coronavirus studied here by approximately 50%.
Hi there, Dr. B here. If you're new to this channel, welcome to InsideTheHive.tv. The goal here in this channel is education. Many of you asked me for more videos about propolis and I'm here delivering them. What I want at the end of the day is that people at home start to be introduced more and more to the scientific method so they can use it on a daily basis. This study and this video is a great first step to start to evaluate whether or not propolis components can be helpful against virus infections in humans. However, we should be cautious here before jumping to conclusions. The authors got some promising positive results that got my attention and make me even more curious about this topic. I have been using propolis for sore throat my whole life, but I never got the opportunity to go deep into the science behind it. And I think this video series would be a great opportunity to take a look at what was done so far. And at the same time, to bring all of you at home into my journey. A lot of work, but it will be fun. Here in the article that I cover in this video, the authors could only show that in cell culture, some propolis compounds were able to interfere with viruses' replication of some human viruses and some bovine viruses. Also, the authors could show that some propolis compounds can reduce virus infection of a couple of viruses in a cell culture model. Period. That's it. That's the only thing we can say based on this article. Please don't get me wrong, I don't want to take away the value of the research or the excitement that it might spark in people truly connected to honeybees. It is encouraging but we need much more data to be confident. I picked this study first because it is one of the first studies trying to answer this question. And since then a lot more research was done that I will be covering here in this channel. It will be quite an interesting journey to see what the researchers were able to do, what they didn't do yet, and perhaps what we can ask them to do in the future after we educate ourselves about the subject. We want to review the full power of propolis, if any. For example, are out there other studies confirming the results of this research group? Are out there any other studies against the results published in this study? What other studies about propolis can teach us? I'm reading a lot and I was completely surprised by the amount of research already done in this topic that I never heard about. Fun videos coming for sure. If you like this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and also supporting us on Patreon. I also want to invite you to watch this next video right here. Thanks for watching. InsideTheHype.tv, the show about bees. See you guys next week.